There we go. Uh, so to get started, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Arts Build Ontario. We are the only organization in Ontario dedicated to realizing long-term solutions for building, managing, and financing the sustainable arts facilities needed on, in Ontario communities. Uh, as, as you know, energy efficiency uh, and conservation is a huge part of maintaining sustainable arts facilities. So we're very excited to have Ed and Sandry from Leadvance, Sylvania here today. Leadvance is a worldwide leader in innovative lighting products and energy saving systems. And Ed and Sandry are here to tell us a little bit more about how uh, performing arts facilities in particular can transition to LED and the cost savings that are available and how LED lighting can help you save long term. Uh, so just to introduce our speakers, we have Ed Evans, National Account Manager, LED at Leadvance Sylvania Limited. Ed is a recognized leader in the lighting industry in regards to energy efficient, sustainable lighting solutions with a focus on new LED products and technologies. Ed has managed hundreds of energy efficient lighting projects, which have resulted in savings of many megawatts of electricity and millions of dollars in cost savings. Sandri Caterino, account manager at Leadvance, has been with the company for 20 years and has excellent interpersonal skills, which allow for the development of long-term and profitable relationships with key decision makers and partners, all while maintaining strong customer relations. Uh, in terms of housekeeping, we will have time for a question period at the end of this presentation, but we will be keeping microphones off. Uh, so please type your question in the chat box after the presentation, and we will do our best to answer them in sequence. Ed and Sandry have also uh, kindly provided their contact information, which will be made available to you at the end of the presentation uh, if you have any further questions for them. Uh, again, just a reminder that we are recording the session and you will receive a link to the recording uh, after the webinar and it will be available on our website as well. Uh, so again, thank you to Ed and Sandry for being here and Ed, you can uh, take it away. Okay, great. Uh, thanks very much, Ailey, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'd like to begin our presentation with uh, two very quick thank yous. Uh, first, of course, we'd like to thank Arts Build Ontario for your invitation to provide this LED webinar and your work to organize it. And we certainly appreciate uh, your ongoing support to help achieve best possible energy cost savings opportunities for your members. Uh, we're very excited to be speaking to one of the most important sustainable energy conservation measures uh, possible today uh, for any building, but certainly for theater arts and other arts facilities in particular. So most importantly, thank you for all of you for investing your time here with us today. We know how busy you are as leaders of your respective arts organizations and your commitment to achieve best possible uh, energy and cost savings for your arts facility and your interest in LED lighting. So our commitment to you is to provide you with very valuable information, very specific, relevant information uh, two uh, theater arts facilities in particular regarding this LED update. So we're going to focus on the new LED products that provide the greatest bang for your buck energy savings. And, and equally importantly, we're also going to focus on how you can achieve the maximum save on energy retrofit program incentives that, are, that is now available from every electrical utility in Ontario. Um, what it, this is all about is driving the best possible payback and the best possible return on investment for an LED project in your theater arts facility while achieving the best possible light quality. And we have a, a very clear understanding and a lot of experience um, with the recognition that, that light quality and performance for theater arts, arts facilities in general, is absolutely equally important, if not more important, than the energy dollar cost savings. So over the past year, there have been many new LED products that have come onto the market with very significant advancements in energy efficiency, particularly important advancements in light quality. And we're gonna talk about the specific improvements to color rendering index and color temperature uh, during the presentation. Very importantly, there's also been significantly lower cost product come into the market this past year. And again, very importantly, uh, June 20th, 2016, there was a very important update to the Save on Energy utility incentives, again, available from every utility in Ontario uh, for better than ever uh, LED product incentives uh, available throughout Ontario. And I hope one of the key takeaways you'll achieve from this presentation 
is all of these factors combined, the very significant increased energy efficiency, the lower, more aggressive pricing of the better quality LED products, these great new incentives from the Ontario utilities, in 2017, this basically drives best ever return on investment levels for an LED project. And these may be peak uh, ROI levels that will be achieved in 2017, because with the, with the pervasiveness of LED increasing across the market, with the prices of LED coming down, as we've seen before, there will probably be an adjustment and changes to the Ontario Utility LED incentives after 2017. So 2017, it's basically your, your peak opportunity to get your budget set and, and, and you know, execute the best LED project uh, you can drive. So what we're all about is we want to ensure that you've got the best opportunity and receive the best report, the best support to review, analyze, and most effectively implement uh, these exciting new LED products in your facility. So we're going to review the LED products that uh, specifically provide the greatest benefits for theater arts facilities. For each of those specific LED product types, we'll comment on the energy and dollar cost savings for each. We'll uh, comment on what the specific utility incentive is for each LED product. And we'll also provide you with a calculation for what the specific payback and return on investment is for each of those best typical uh, LED applications for theater arts facilities. We'll also provide you with a, a general overview and a number of specifics of the benefits of LED technology. And we'll also provide you with some important buyer beware tips for LED, uh, some of which that the utilities themselves ask us to pass along to their important customers. We'll also provide a quick update on the current LED market so you can get a handle. I think it's very important to achieve an understanding so you can best implement a project for your facility. It's important for you to understand what's taking place in the uh, overall LED market, uh, the overall lighting market and the acceptance of LED. So to achieve all this, we're going to re review several important LED case studies for arts facilities, uh, including uh, the McMichael Canadian Art Gallery project. We're also going to show you the results of um, a, a site assessment walkthrough that uh, we just conducted uh, at um, an Ontario theater arts facility in December and bring all this together. And, and once again, what we're going to very much focus on and, and, and help you to, to best understand is the fact that there has been this very significant increased efficiency of LED versus the traditional types of lighting in the theater arts facility. And again, um, help to impress, help to make the, the business case to you and in turn, the business case from you to your colleagues that this new high quality brand name LED lighting provides equivalent, if not superior light quality to the traditional types of lighting you have in your uh, theater arts facility at present. And again, once again, always make sure that you're taking the opportunity to maximize the incentives available. Uh, because again, our key objective is to make sure that you achieve the best possible return on investment uh, for LED for your facility. And we'll just begin by taking a very quick one minute uh, reintroduction as to who we are at Leadvent Sylvania. Many of you know us, of course, as uh, one of the big three brand name lighting companies. Uh, Sylvania and Osram Sylvania have been around now for well over 100 years. But in regards to our market position for LED, we're also one of the largest manufacturers globally of LED. Um, we're one of the two largest leaders uh, in the NAFTA and the Canadian commercial lighting market for LED. And this past year, we manufactured over 10 billion LED chips. We're an industry leader for research and development investment in LED and hold over 10,000 patents in LED technology. And most important to all of us here in Ontario, is that uh, Sylvania has been one of the largest drivers uh, of any type of electricity conservation projects uh, in the Ontario market. And the utilities uh, have told us we were also one of the largest driver of incentive dollars into our customers' pockets. So specifically, the commitment here um, to the Arts Build uh, member arts organizations 
is to make sure that we're working with you at your site to achieve maximum energy savings and particularly important, a service that we've committed to provide is to work with you uh, on the specifics of the incentives that you're eligible for. Also to help you work with you, if not actually do the paperwork on your behalf uh, with the utilities. And I can't stress enough that right now in Ontario, as you're gonna see, the Ontario utility incentives are some of the very best in North America. Um, you'll see that the LED incentives can drive as much as 50% or more of your LED uh, project capital costs for a project. So again, this is why we're really achieving sweet spots for payback and return on investment uh, in 2017 for LED in Ontario. So here are the major trends in the global lighting market, 2010 through 2020. Um, Canada and Ontario in particular tends to be actually a little ahead of this curve. Uh, because of the incentives that have been available in the market the past several years. Uh, as you know, due to the great advances in LED efficiency and light quality, the lighting market is going through a huge transformation. Very much a, a revolution in lighting is taking place right now. It's the digital revolution that has also impacted computers and uh, whatever technology can utilize semiconductors and, and digital technologies. So the data on the chart is from an independent McKinsey report based on input from leading lighting global engineers and all of the leading lighting global manufacturers. And it helps to explain why new LED lighting products can achieve some of the greatest energy dollar cost savings and some of the best return on investment of any, any energy conservation measure in the market. So please note the LED or the blue area at the top of the chart here in early uh, 2017 LED now comprises well over 20% of all installed lighting in commercial buildings in Ontario, from industrial to institutional and retail, basically every building that's not a single family residential home. And the chart actually shows a higher skewed percentage of the overall lighting market being LED because of the fact that the automotive industry has now pretty much already predominantly transitioned all automotive onboard lighting over to LED. However, within three to four years, well over 50% of all lighting globally in commercial buildings is projected to be installed LED, and within five to seven years, over 70% of all installed lighting in every single commercial building will be installed LED, and this is driven entirely by the business case. It's based in, entirely on such a significant, attractive return on investment being achieved by LED projects. So the chart shows LED market growth, but it also reflects the increased efficiency of LED and the significant growth of the range of different types of opportunities and applications for energy cost savings. This is particularly pertinent to theater arts facilities. And it also reflects the decreasing LED costs, again, for much better return on investment and in particular, jurisdictions such as Ontario that have particularly significant incentives available. So as you can well appreciate, it's all about the relative efficiencies of these new LED products versus the traditional products in your facilities today, or what we refer to as the lumens per watt, the LPW, basically the miles per gallon of the lighting industry. The chart shows very rapid LED market growth now as LED sales have exploded due to the relative efficiency of now well over 80 LPW for the type of LED lamps we're gonna be discussing in this presentation that are particularly beneficial to arts facilities versus only five to 40 LPW for the traditional incandescent and halogen lighting you would have also in regards to the uh, fluorescent tube type lamps, uh, LED has now achieved well over 120 lumens per watt, where traditional fluorescent is down in the 70 to 80 range. Also important for exterior lighting, the traditional exterior lighting technologies are generally metal halite or high pressure sodium. They're only in the 70 to 80 LPW range and all of those new fixtures now are generally well in excess of 105, 110 
up to 120 LPW or better. So now that where all of these lamp types, all of the LED tube types, the pin base, the screw base lamps uh, for LED, they've now significantly surpassed all of the traditional categories of fluorescent and then way past incandescent and, and uh, halogen. They've also achieved that much better light quality in most of the categories, at least uh, equivalent, if not superior light quality. And we'll actually be going through that by uh, lighting type category. And again, uh, LED has achieved a far longer life than all of those uh, traditional categories. So for all of these reasons, that's why we're making the case to you that 2017 is a particular sweet spot to, uh, to execute and achieve the benefits of LED. And again, I, I think we can make the case to you that that is particularly the case for uh, arts and, and theater arts facilities in particular. So before we get into the specific new LED products, case studies, incentives, and payback information, here's an overview of the key reasons why LED is a big game changer for not only energy efficiency, but also for the sustainability of lighting. Regarding sustainability, very important, LEDs are virtually free of all hazardous materials. In particular, they contain no mercury, and mercury is critical to the operation, to the technology of all fluorescent lighting products. So the great news is this now all goes away. That, that very toxic hazardous uh, material of mercury uh, is no longer a, a necessity to be used in a, in, a, in a building's lighting. The 10 to 20 times longer lamp life of the LED lamps we're gonna be looking at versus the traditional incandescent and halogen that are still fairly pervasive in theater arts buildings. Um, five, to, uh, five times longer life versus the compact fluorescent type of light bulbs that you may have in uh, many of your, your pot lights in, in lobbies and other areas. And basically a, a three to four times longer life um, of LED versus those traditional HID exterior lighting technologies. And all of this means much less burned out light bulbs and lighting going into landfill. Um, across the board, we're gonna see that LED lamps, uh, all of the LED lamps for the theater arts facilities we're looking at, they all use a minimum of 80% less energy than the incandescent and halogen lighting, um, the traditional lighting sockets. Um, and that Again, a range across the board of all of the different types of LED replacements for whatever type of traditional lighting you have in your facility, you're looking basically at a minimum now of, of really 40% up to 75% or more with each and every type of traditional lighting type you would have uh, in your theater arts facility. Also, a, a, a very important benefit is the fact that LEDs, they emit less heat. They emit 60, 70, uh, 80% less heat versus the traditional light sources. So air conditioning loads are lessened, um, a particular benefit for arts facilities in the summertime. And also uh, important to know that LED lamps and many other LED retrofit products utilize your existing fixtures. So they, they fit into the footprint um, most of the, most everything we're going to look at today is basically plug and play. Um, they either just screw in or pop into your existing fixtures, or it's a very, very minimal retrofit, a low cost um, um, labor retrofit measure. So again, this re reduces the amount of lighting product going into landfill as a result of your LED project transition. So the reason why the LED market has exploded these past three to four years is due to the rapid market uptake of these LED plug and play retrofit lamps. And these are the lamps that provide that greatest energy savings across the board at 80% plus uh, the best paybacks and the best return on investments. Um, that there's now an LED lamp solution, an LED lamp type to replace most every incandescent halogen um, and incandescent traditional lamp type um, from the the PAR types that we see there, center screen, very center of the screen, those are the PAR 38s, the PAR 30s, uh, PAR 20s, very common in theater arts facilities, often used in your uh, theater house lighting, track lights, lobby lights, um, oftentimes in some facilities, 
Um, the BR uh, light bulb type is used. That's the type at the far right of your screen, uh, a slightly different rounded face on it than uh, all of the PAR lamps you see there. And again, in lobbies, uh, track lighting, other applications, um, often used in theater arts and various uh, art gallery facilities, uh, the MR16 types of bulbs that you see on the left-hand side of the screen there. So all of these are now replaced with a much superior uh, LED replacement. And the great news is that by maximizing the Ontario utility incentives across the board now, as you're going to see in several payback uh, example slides upcoming here, the payback for all of these types, uh, depending on your hours of operation, is assuredly well under one year. And then depending on your typical hours of operation, in most instances now, and the examples we're going to show, you'll see that the payback is well under six months. You know, driving return, annual return on investments in the two to 300% range. So again, extremely important, as you see the attributes are listed there, these LED lamps have now absolutely achieved full equivalent light quality. And, and that is the case with the better brand name products. There's certainly lesser quality, dubious quality LED products in the market, but it's not just Sylvania. The other major brand names across the board, there's been an achievement now in this category of absolutely equivalent light quality, if not superior light quality. And again, I think you'll see that come through in some of the case studies that we're going to show. Certainly, these LED plug and play lamps uh, provide uh, a superior quality light to all of the traditional uh, HID exterior lighting and all traditional fluorescent lighting, the tubes and the pot lights. So very much a compelling case now to identify each and every existing uh, incandescent and halogen lamps in your facilities. Uh, take a look, do a test, take a look at the performance benefits, and we're more than happy to do the calculations for you for the energy savings, dollar cost savings, return on investment, and the incentives that you're available for. So now to get a little bit more specific into the benefits for theater arts facilities, one of the most common or typical types of incandescent and halogen lighting that uh, are in many uh, theater arts facilities are this PAR family type of lighting, the PAR 38s, the PAR 30s, um, mo most prevalent in the pot lights in your theater house lighting. So again, as you can see across the board for all of these types, energy savings uh, in the 80% range. And again, um, please note the numbers we have there, several bullets down for the color rendering index. So the CRI is the lighting industry's measure on a scale of one to 100 of how well uh, a light source shows color. And that basically, uh, these LED lamps are now achieving equivalent CRI to the higher quality incandescent and halogen lighting. And then what we've done, again, extremely important for theater arts and, and, and certainly any visual arts facility, the color temperature. You're, many of you will be familiar with the color temperature. The color temperature of a, a halogen or an incandescent light is generally in the 2700 to 3000 Kelvin range. Um, many, many fluorescent lights are 3000, 3500, 4100, or a higher Kelvin color temperature. And what we've done is we've designed these new LED lights, and there's a tremendous amount of quality control goes into this, a, a process referred to as binning, that we guarantee the consistency of the color temperature. So if we're replacing a 3000 Kelvin halogen lamp in your house light ceiling, we're replacing it with a 3000 Kelvin LED lamp. Particularly important for theater arts facilities, particularly for the, the house lighting, is dimmability. All of these higher quality brand name lights have excellent dimmability. It may be, again, we want to be very transparent, very conservative in the, in the proclamations and the statements we make about the performance of these products. The one minor variance is the, the nature of the dimmability, that um, in some respects, 
the dimmability of LED is superior because again, it's a digital light source so that the, the dimming can be controlled uh, extremely accurately. Oftentimes though, as opposed to the dimmability of a LED going um, from 100 down to zero, that the LED will often dim down to about 100 to 10% or so and then drop off. So, so there is a, a slight difference in how um, a, a house light would dim. But again, what we would strongly recommend is, you know, purchase a box of them or see if we can arrange to get you a couple of samples. But good idea to, you know, buy half a dozen, put them in an outside row and give them a test. Um, we strongly recommend testing these products uh, because testing generally drives reassurance that these products are going to deliver uh, everything you require as far as performance goes. Uh, and again, the tremendous benefit of that long life, that all of these LED products that we're looking at, all of the lamps, they're all what's referred to as 25,000 hour Energy Star rated life. And there's some good news here as far as these criterias. Um, the government has stepped in, the Energy Star divisions. There's very stringent criteria for these products to be incentive eligible. They have to pass uh, tests at independent labs and they have to be rated for um, lumen maintenance and life maintenance. So all of these lamps have been rated for a minimum of 25,000 hours E-Star. However, most of them have been designed for over 50,000 hours. And again, it's a little bit of a complicated discrepancy. In order to achieve um, a 25,000 hour E-Star rating, um, a, a product must be tested in an independent lab for 3,000 hours, and then they can develop a lumen uh, maintenance curve from that. To achieve a 50,000 hour E-Star rating, uh, rating the, the product must be tested uh, 6,000 hours nonstop, which is the better part of a year. Um, so generally, we just make sure the lamp gets 25,000 hour rated. The tests continue to run, and then the, the rating is upgraded. But um, important for you to know, you, you must get a 25,000 hour E-Star rated lamp in order for it to be eligible for the incentives. And in our case, these lamps are all rated for 50,000 hours of life or longer. So now to the specifics, the examples of just how good the payback is for these uh, all of these LED lamp types. So again, we've been very, very conservative here. What, what you're seeing on this eye chart, I'll, I'll try to go through it as quickly as I can. And then in follow-up meetings, we can certainly go through it in great detail. But this is the snapshot of the typical payback calculation that we would uh, put together for you. And it's an, exam an example of one, our, one of our highest lumen new LED 14 watt LED PAR 38s that we would use to replace anywhere from a 90 watt PAR or halogen incandescent all the way up to 150 watt. So we've purposely chosen one of our highest lumen and also I have to say one of our very highest cost products um, because in a, a theater arts uh, house light pot light ceiling sometimes some theaters will have some very very high lumen PAR 38 lamps that being said, we've also seen other theaters that simply have a, a somewhat lower lumen PAR 30 lamp. So anyways, to understand what we've presented here on this chart, on the upper left-hand side, you'll basically see we, we list what's existing. So what's, what's existing in this example is that PAR 38 90 watt halogen. For the sake of easy math, uh, we've rounded the numbers, the quantity to 100. We've seen theater house light ceilings that maybe we'll have 50, 60, 70 or more, in some cases more than 100. So for ease of calculation, we rounded it off at 100. Here we've used 3,500 hours per year operation. Your theater may operate less, but 3,500 hours we've seen as somewhat typical for arts facilities for various applications. Uh, and then as you can see, we're going from a, um, 90 watts per socket down to 14 watts. Uh, again, we've selected one of our very most expensive products. A hundred of them cost roughly $2,200. So it's a, it's a very expensive, high performance, $22 LED PAR 38. Um, there's many that would work well. Some of the other ones that I referred to, the sizes, they'd be more down around $16 or $17, but we wanted to be very conservative to show you 
just how good the return on investment is here. So on this high quality, high lumen lamp, and the utilities actually pay you a premium uh, for the higher lumen, higher quality lamps, because they don't want you to compromise your performance when you make this transition. On that $22 product, you get a $14 per lamp incentive. So I'm, I'm down now looking at total supply quotation of $2,230. Um, roughly $22 a lamp, estimated rebate on 100 lamps, $1,400. So you're actually looking at a net project cost of these lamps of only $8 per lamp. And again, this applies whether you need 10 of these, 50 of these, 100 of these, or 250. The payback and, and the, the prices, it's all relative. We would charge, if it's a very, very large quantity, you'd actually get a significant break on this price. But for the payback calculation, it doesn't matter whether you have 20 lamps, 50, 100, or, or 200. So the, the net supply cost would be $8 a lamp. However, the simple electricity savings you would achieve going from 90 watts to 14 watts um, 100 times at 3,500 hours a year is over $2,900 a year. So basically, you're investing $8 per socket but in simple, basic, just in electricity savings, you're achieving over $29 annual uh, incentive, uh, dollar savings. Then this next line, cost avoidance during payback period, we've actually been very conservative there because there's two other ways that you save. The life of an incandescent and halogen is generally no more than 3,000 hours. So if you're operating an incandescent or halogen 3,000 hours a year, you're having to replace it every year. And of course, theater house lights or other hard to get, other uh, hard to access sockets. Uh, it's a very, very expensive process to replace that uh, lamp every year. In the market though, the, the traditional price to the cost to change a light bulb is about three to $4 um, labor costs. But of course, you're also paying about four or $5 for that uh, traditional PAR 38 halogen. So very, very conservatively, uh, every year and every socket, if you don't have to replace that lamp, because the LED is now going to uh, last you five hours, or excuse me, five years. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to read uh, comments and questions while I'm going through the slides here. I said, I'll, I'll stop doing that. Yes, you're correct. There is a typo on the slide, and we'll address that at the end. It's because you can use either an 11 or a 14, but for the calculation, we've actually, yes, we've used a 14 watt to be conservative uh, for the calculation. So, uh, so again, your maintenance labor cost savings and your lamp replacement cost savings for a theater facility, it, it's going to be at least $8 per year per socket. We've only used $3 per year. So we've said you're going to save $300 in maintenance and lamp replacement costs, where it's going to be much higher than that. So you can see the overall project savings here to replace these 100 lamps is well over $3,200. Your payback without the incentive would be eight months, an outstanding payback, but with that huge uh, incentive above about 60 or 70 percent of project cost, your payback is only three months. So what that means is for every thousand dollars you invest in these LED lamps, um, it, it's going to pay for itself every three months, uh, which that drives basically a 400 percent annual return on investment. And just to illustrate, I mean, I know we've got um, some maintenance people on the phone. We've got some people that uh, understand um, the different, uh, you know, the, the lighting parlance I'm using here. But I understand we also have some administrators. And of course, you know, one of the wonderful things about lighting is it has that jargon all of its own. So just to give you an example, of, a visual example of the type of products we're talking about, the PAR lamp, the PAR lamp type, the PAR 38 or the PAR 30 that would be most prevalent in most theater arts uh, house ceilings would be that center lamp. Some theaters we've seen use the BR type, that's on the right, and then actually in the theater itself, we have seen some use of uh, the traditional 60 watt or higher wattage A19, traditional light bulb shape there, although more often in sconces and, and that sort of thing. But we have been surprised about how pervasive the use of 60 watt um, or other types of incandescent light bulbs are in theaters. And then on the right there, we're also showing, you know, what an LED T8 is and, and what a, uh, the, the top picture on the right hand side there is a little shot of a, the end of a, T, of a T8 fluorescent lamp would be the typical lamps that you would have in your four foot 
and two foot fixtures uh, around the theater arts facility. So just very, very quickly, because I want to make sure we're, I'm, I'm a little bit behind time here, but wanted to show you just another example. Um, MR-16 is very prevalent in theater arts facilities. And again, here's the kind of payback calculation we provide for you. I won't go into the details here at all, but bottom line, as you can see down the bottom there, the payback is the same, you know, almost too good to be true type of, of payback that you're looking here in this case at a, uh, a, a high quality MR, LED MR16 costs $10, but the incentive is $6. So you're, the net price is $4 or actually less for lower wattage products. Um, and again, you're looking at a payback here of less than three months. So you may have these in, in your lobbies and other places around the facility. So again, you're looking at uh, return on investments here of three to 400% a year annually. And with a five-year warranty, you're going to be enjoying that return on investment uh, for um, a, a warranty period of five years. So here's just a, a several quick case studies. I have to admit that our particular, the particular team that Sandri and I work on, we have many teams in Ontario that have done a little bit more theaters, but we all have great lighting experience. It just so happens that our particular team, we've had a lot more experience and have a lot more success stories to share uh, in the visual art community, but um, even though I, I understand there's great distinctions between theater arts and visual arts, that what we have found in our research is that the lighting types are, are very, very similar. So I, I like to use the case study of the McMichael because the McMichael, you know, I'm sure you're all familiar with the McMichael Canadian Art Collection in Vaughan, Ontario, um, houses, you know, one of our great Canadian art treasures, a group of seven paintings. It was one of the first major arts facilities in North America to completely transition all of its interior lighting to LED. Um, they did this now, it must be close to six years ago, uh, 600, par 20, par 30, par 38, a mixture, mostly par 30, 15 watt lamps. Uh, they achieved a payback back in those days when LED costs were much higher of a little over a year. Now in today's values, the payback have been, would have been well under a year. Um, achieved an incentive of well more than 50% of project costs. Uh, and the great thing about the McMichael is because it's been installed for so long, we've had all this wonderful feedback from their curators, um, various experts that have gone through to tour the facility. And we've received the feedback that on no uncertain terms, they were using our best traditional halogen lighting previously. They now use our best, uh, actually it's a generation old LED lighting. But they, they claim, their curators claim, and the people that have worked with these paintings for 20 to 30 years, claim that the color rendering of the LED lamps are actually better than the traditional lighting that they used previously. Um, the same is the case, again, time doesn't permit to go into a lot of detail, but another a really good case study in Ontario is the Burlington Art Centre. Um, that uh, I like using this case study because they had such a wide range of different types of traditional lighting types. Um, uh, they had a tremendous quantity of pot lights in this facility, PAR 38s, PAR 30s, PAR 20s. Uh, they had MR 16s, A lamps, different types of fluorescent tubes. Uh, all of them now replaced uh, with LED, um, actually with the exception of some of the fluorescent tubes because they went to a very, very low wattage fluorescent tube. But um, this again was done four or five years ago. If they had have done this today, I think they would have transitioned everything over to LED. But bottom line, um, a payback once again of well under a year and Burlington Art Gallery provides really excellent feedback on the quality of the LED lighting. And this is a, a particularly fun um, LED success story. Uh, ones that our colleagues, uh, Osram Sylvania in Europe did. And again, we want to illustrate that the tremendous many, many, many years of research have gone into um, determining by leading um, arts world experts that the quality of LED lighting is now equivalent or superior. Um, research was done on the Sistine Chapel project for the better part of five years. Uh, and again, it, it was driven by tremendous energy savings, tremendous cost dollar savings, but obviously they had to satisfy themselves that the color perception, that the the, the color rendering index had to be equivalent or superior to the extremely high quality traditional lighting they were using. And as you can see in these before and after shots, and there's marvelous um, uh, success stories and, and case studies of this project online, but you can see that much to their delight, 
um, the the illumination of the art treasures there, they were actually better illuminated by the LED lighting. And again, because you all have office areas, administrative areas, uh, we're now going to take a look at LED tube lighting, and we thought it appropriate rather than talk about a small administrative area to give you an idea what's happening in, in corporate Canada with their offices, that basically most major property managers, most major office towers in Canada, uh, they're now looking at transitioning all of their LED T8 tube fluorescent lighting over to T8. Uh, here's an example of one of the largest projects that was done in Canada last year. It's the Sylvania LED success story with one of our major partners, Cadillac Fairview, and their uh, key buildings in downtown Toronto, the TD Bank Tower, and the uh, seven major towers in this group downtown. They basically, again, three years of research, uh, they had to satisfy themselves, uh, energy savings, um, very important. They had very high standards for light quality, and they also had a very important uh, environmental sustainability mandate and these products uh, well overachieved in those categories. So just very quickly, LED T8 options. I see that I'm a little bit behind time, so I'm gonna jump through a little bit quickly. But basically the big innovation here once again is that these lamps are directly plug and play into your existing fixtures. You can just remove your existing T8 fluorescent tubes and these operate off the existing ballast. 40% energy savings as we see here uh, and paybacks well down now in the 14 month range. Uh, the, pr the price of these have come down quite a bit. You can now get them for $14 or better. The incentive is $7. So again, a great application for your administrative areas. Very important to note, you wanna make sure you're getting the best rock solid warranty in these products. You're investing a lot of money. They're supposed to last well over five years. You wanna make sure you're getting a solid brand name warranty from a reputable organization. Very important buyer beware note, the utilities have asked us to pass along, is there is a type of LED T8 tube out in the market that's referred to as direct line voltage. It's the type I'm referring to in the top here in red. They have internal drivers or internal ballasts. So to use these type of LED T8 lamps, you actually have to rewire your fluorescent fixtures. The utilities don't like them, the market doesn't like them, so the utilities have decided not to incent them. Um, and the reason why the utilities want this message going out is they're now being dumped into the market. That quite a few have been brought in to the Ontario market. They're not being sent, incented, so they're being dumped quite cheap. You wanna focus on the type that we just covered, that we covered down there in green. A brand name, DLC rated, what we refer to as a substitute, a, a product, an LED T8 tube that works directly off the existing fluorescent ballast so you don't need to touch the wiring and there's no issues uh, with shock hazards and things. So again, we can explain this more fully at a follow-up meeting. So just gonna touch on this very quickly because I'm now starting to tiptoe into our Q&A time. So we've now covered, I think you're quite familiar with the, the benefits of LED energy savings, maintenance savings, quality of light, sustainability benefits, uh, but very important to note, there's a wide range of LED in the market. Um, LED, like all electronics, their biggest enemy is heat. You have to make sure you're buying an LED product that has excellent thermal management design. But the good news is Energy Star and Design Lights Consortium now have arrangements with utilities that uh, an LED product is not eligible for incentives unless the lamp has an Energy Star rating or the tube or fixture has a DLC rating. So all of the products we're reviewing have passed those tests, have those standards, make sure anything you're looking at uh, does, does have that. So just very, very quickly, we've now covered all of the key, most of the key benefits for all of the interior applications for LED at a theater arts, arts facility, but very quickly wanted to touch on the fact that with pot lights in your lobbies, you may want a particularly clean look. So there's another option to the LED lamp types. There are LED pot light retrofit kits that again, long warranty, very efficient, uh, covered by incentives. Something you need to be aware of, and also there's a little buyer beware note here, for your CFL pin based pot lights, there's a new type of product that has just come onto the market. It's a stick based, pin-based CFL replacement for pot lights. There are some issues here. They're not eligible for prescriptive incentives. 
And there has been a number of recalls on this product type, the reason being there's a wide range of different types of ballasts in pot lights, and there are compatibility issues. Many of them flicker. So we've actually delayed our release of this product onto the market. We're doing some further testing. They're about to come out. We've satisfied ourselves that we have the, the ballast compatibility issue addressed. But this is an, a very interesting product type for you to consider, but certainly one you want to approach with a buyer beware. Again, in offices, lobbies, other areas where maybe your uh, T8 fluorescent recess fixtures have quite a bit of mileage on them, maybe the lenses, maybe you'd like to replace the fixture, here's a fantastic option for that. These new LED panels, rather than just replacing the tubes, you replace the entire face of the fixture. They just drop into the T-bar, cost less than $100. Again, DLC rated, uh, incentive eligible, a great option there. Signage is another area you want to take a look at. One of the most rapid areas of adoptions of LED is signage. And certainly exterior lighting, the key thing you want to look at is your wall packs. Most large theaters, arts facilities, uh, their exterior walls will be lit with these traditional wall packs. This is a real no-brainer uh, category here. 80% energy savings, one-for-one one replacement, incentive rated, great paybacks. So same thing with these canopies, lobbies, loading docks, all sorts of things, all sorts of options. So um, I've come to the end of my presentation time here. Just quickly want to wrap up and make the point to you that uh, we really want to support you and help you build your business case to move forward with an LED action plan. You know, 40 to 80 percent energy savings, paybacks, um, as you saw there, uh, you know, two, three hundred, four hundred percent um, uh, paybacks. Um, and, and that doesn't even include all of the maintenance savings that a theater arts facility will achieve with those hard to get at um, uh, applications for lighting. So great news across the board. And, and I had this discussion with Arts Build the other day that we're, we're very, very keen to get out and do site visits with you um, to review your facilities. Uh, it, it is absolutely the case that 2017, there's never been a better opportunity for theater arts facilities to look at transitioning to LED. The prices are way down and the quality is way up and these incentives are at peak levels. So we understand, as well as anybody, the, the resistance, the reluctance. You have a certain look with your house lights, you know, certainly in, in dressing rooms and various other areas that there's a real sensitivity and a critical importance to the, the light quality. And that's why we're so keen to visit your site, do a test, show you uh, how high the quality of these products are. And then certainly uh, when you show um, the, the paybacks, the energy savings and, and the very, very significant savings you'll achieve annually with this LED transition, that certainly, you know, your CEO, your CFO and all the people on the financial side, uh, you know, you're looking at saving many, many thousands of dollars a year. So I'll wrap it up there. Um, sorry, I went a little bit over time, but we've still got 10 minutes for questions. And then, of course, Sandra and I are available by email and phone anytime you'd like to follow up with any questions or any requests for site visits or, or information about pricing or incentives, whatever you like. So, Ailey, I'll turn it over to you and, and see if, um, if the attendees uh, have any questions for us. Great. Thank you so much, Ed. Uh, so, everyone, uh, floor is open for questions. If you could please type your question in the chat box. Um, we will answer them in sequence, as many as we can get to. Uh, we can also forward any questions that we don't get to to Ed and Sandria, and we'll work to get you guys an answer. So um, we did have a question from Tom. Uh, what about theatrical lights, HPL or FEL, et cetera? Yes, actually, sorry, I meant to sort of make a disclaimer about that. We talked to Artsbill before the presentation, and because there's such a wide range and that theater theatrical lighting is, is such a specific type of lighting, um, we decided not to approach that in this presentation. Um, there are not the range of products available at this point as far as replacements go. The energy savings aren't as great. But because the savings in the entire rest of the theater arts facility is so compelling, we wanted to uh, proceed with you know, covering every other application in a theater arts facility, um, but not the theatrical lights. That really is a highly specialized area. 
that it really would require a specialized audit of, of what you have existing. Um, and there's a fair bit of variances. And as I say, because it's not a particularly large market, there isn't as wide a range of LED energy savings options for that category yet. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Glenn would like to know, do you have any information on compatibility with ETC sensor dimmers? Yes, that um, with all of our products, we actually provide a dimmer compatibility list. So, and it's also a question we ask before we proceed with uh, any uh, LED lighting retrofit or replacement. We, we take a look at, at what your existing dimming system is and then make sure it's compatible. So as I say, that um, that would be, we would handle that on a site specific basis. We'd see what type of LED makes most sense for your application. We'd take a look at what your dimming system is, and then we provide a list of um, you know, compatible dimmers for our recommendations. In some cases, the LED solutions we're recommending here will be compatible with your existing dimmers. In other cases, uh, the dimmers would need to be replaced. But, but typically, again, uh, where we're talking about um, the, the typical dimmers for the, the screw-based and pin-based types of uh, LED lamps, the PARs, the BRs, the MR16s, more often than not, they are um, compatible with existing dimming systems. But as I say, we're very careful to take a look at what your existing dimming system is and then provide you with a very, very long compatibility list uh, of what is uh, compatible. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, David would like to know, how does dimming influence CRI, aka Okay, so that's a very interesting question because actually, it, it, you know, CRI um, and and uh, the color temperature, the Kelvins are actually you know, two two different topics, but basically that that is another difference between traditional incandescent and halogen lighting. Where, as you know, when you dim um, a traditional house light, um, as you dim it down, uh, it it becomes a warmer, yellower color temperature. So you know when you're at full brightness with a house light, you've got a nice um, um, cooler color temperature, medium warmth, 3000 Kelvin or better, but by the time it's dimmed down, it, it's a much, much lower, uh, warmer temperature. LED um, Kelvin's color temperature, they do not change when you dim them down. Now, it's interesting. We actually released a line of products called Sunset Effect. It's a premium line. There wasn't tremendous uptake in the market, and we've discontinued some of them. So the type of LED lamps we've talked about in the presentation today, the color temperature does not change. So if you install a, a PAR 38 in a house light ceiling, and it's a 3000 Kelvin color temperature, um, the when you dim it down to 50, down to 10%, the color temperature remains at 3000. It doesn't get warmer. However, something that I need we need to check on is for those of you, and I have had this question from theaters, that they really like, they, they like that traditional look of the dimming down to a warmer color temperature. We do have uh, what we refer to the sunset effect uh, product available, but it is a premium temperature. In regards to the CRI, the color rendering index, that again remains high. It, it diminishes, and I'm not sure exactly what the curve would be, but um, basically the LED maintains its color temperature and CRI throughout the, the dimming. That's great. Uh, Glenn has asked, do you have any mogul base products? Uh, again, it's one of those answers where it depends. Yes, we do, but much, much more limited selection on mogul-based products. So mogul-based tend to be larger lamps, um, higher wattages. So yes, we do have a line um, of, we haven't shown it here because it's a very specific product, but you know, particularly to replace HID products, we do have an LED replacement for that. But again, uh, Glenn, what we need to know um, is specifically what uh, what type of the existing mogul-based product there is. There are solutions 
uh, but it would depend on the specific type of the mogul product, mogul-based product. So that's certainly something, Glenn, that you could follow up uh, with uh, Sandri and myself. Let us know, you know, after the, the uh, presentation here, what specific type of products you're looking for, and then we can tell you if there's a mogul-based solution for that. Great, I think we have time for uh, one more question. I see there's some typing happening. Um, so if anyone has one last question, we can get to that. Otherwise, we can uh, we can wrap up and share the contact information there for Ed and Sandry. Okay, we have one last question from David. Uh, based on a timeline threshold of five years, where do, where do you see pricing points for LED lamps in five years? Okay, so so that's a great question. As you can imagine, we get this question a lot, and and I I feel really strongly, you know, slash passionately. So this this actually could be a great great question to conclude on. That what we've seen um, over the past three or four years is we've seen a good um, I would on average fifteen percent plus uh, deterioration decreasing of LED lamp pricing. Um, every year, 15, 15 to twenty percent, some years. Now that is slowing down. I mean, we're now talking about you know really high quality A lamp replacements for a sixty watt light bulb of you know in the four dollar range. So that's not going to come down too much more. And for a theater arts application, you don't want a lower quality residential you know one or two dollar off the shelf product. And the interesting thing is that example in particular. We've got an extremely high quality four dollar and twenty five cent a lamp to replace a sixty five a sixty watt light bulb. But because it's so high quality, I think the incentive for it is three dollars and fifty cents. So the net price is actually seventy five cents. So here's my point, David, that okay, you've already seen the vast majority of price decreases that are going to occur. I fully expect you're going to continue to see, as much as a five to 10% price decrease, possibly annually over the next five years. However, this is, the, this is really the heart of the matter. If you've got an LED application, you know, lobbies, house lights, things that are really easy. And at this point in time, you know, that light bulb costs, you know, case of MR16, the highest quality MR16 costs 10 bucks, but your incentive right now is at an all-time high of six bucks. Your net is four, and then the most important consideration is your payback is three months. <laughs> so for every one of these LED lights you buy, whether it costs five dollars or ten dollars, if you install that ten-dollar light bulb, get a, a six-dollar incentive, so it's only costing you four bucks. You're going to save four bucks every three months every year. So you invest and you invest $4, you're saving 12 a year, 300% return on investment. So even even if I told you that LED prices are going to decrease 20% a year, why would anyone wait? The incentives will probably be gone, the incentives will assuredly decrease. So I'm making the case to all of you your all-time sweet spot, you'll never achieve a better value and return on investment than you will uh, in 2017. Great, thank you so much, Ed. Uh, I'm sorry to cut the question period short, uh, but we do have to wrap up. If you have any additional questions, please uh, uh, type them or send them to me via email and we will make sure that those get answered for you. Uh, so thank you so much to Ed and Sandry um, you can see Ed and Sandry's contact information is on the slide there. Uh, I will also include it in a follow-up email, which will include the link to the recording of this webinar, which you are welcome to share with, uh, with colleagues and other teammates at your facility. Uh, if you are interested in scheduling a walkthrough for a cost estimate uh, for your facility to transition to LED, uh, feel free to contact me. We will connect you with Ed and Sandry. Uh, and, and as they mentioned earlier, they're, they're happy to do it. Uh, so just as a reminder, uh, we will be emailing this recording of the session to all participants. So thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time out of your day to join us and uh, have a fantastic day. Thanks so much, everyone. Great questions. We really appreciate it. Look forward to working with you. Bye for now.